If you're just getting started with Google Ads to generate leads and sales for your business, this is the campaign template for you. Timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a link to our Google Ads playbook. More on that in a bit. So we'll go ahead and kick things off by going to ads.google.com. Now, if you already have an account set up, here's the timestamp to skip the account setup process. Otherwise, you'll go ahead and click on sign up here, and then you'll just use whatever email address you want to use for your Google Ads account. You can always change this later and add and remove access. Then if you've been working on an account in the past, you'll have a list of the ones you already have access to, or you can go ahead and create a new one, and then you'll get to a page that looks something like this, and you're going to want to click and switch to expert mode. Now, if you already have an account, I'm inside one of our Google Ads accounts right here, you'll click on the blue plus button, click to new campaign, and you will get to the same place. So whether you're just getting started setting up your account for the first time, or you already have an account and you're creating a new campaign, this is the page we all need to be on in order to get started. So we'll go ahead and start by creating a campaign without a goals guidance. And this just allows us more control when it comes to the options we're going to have available to us when we're creating our campaign. Then we'll go ahead and select search. So search means these are ads that are going to show up when someone goes over to Google, searches for a product or service, and these are typically the top one to three results. You can see here at the top for accounting and bookkeeping services. And then there will also be ads all the way at the bottom of the search results page as well. So this is going to be what our ads will look like and where they will actually show up on Google search. So we'll go ahead and collect, sit, click, collect, we'll click search. Then if you have any conversion goals set up, those will be here. If you haven't set up conversion tracking yet, that's okay. You can still set up your campaign. Strongly recommend you check out this video linked in the cards in the description, Google Tag Manager video to get all of your tracking code set up with as minimal code touching as possible. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. I'll go ahead and give our campaign a name. I like to name it after whatever the product or service is being promoted, and then let me know what type of campaign it is. And I'm just gonna put demo in all caps so I know to turn this off later. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. And the first decision we're going to have to make is how we're going to pay for our ads. So if you're just getting started for the first time, you're going to, instead of optimize for or pay for conversions, you're going to click on clicks here and set a maximum cost per click. Now, what should this number be? I'll go ahead and start at three. Here's a table from WordStream. I believe this is 20, late 2021 data, but it gives you an approximation of how much you could expect to pay per click based upon your niche industry. Obviously some Industries cost a lot more than others, and you're just gonna have to figure this out as you start running campaigns, especially depending upon the actual country, state, even county that you're going to be running your ads in. So I'll go ahead and start with three. Again, timestamps below to come back to that chart. We'll go ahead and click on next here. And then we have the option of other networks. So as we talked about in the beginning, we want to run search ads. They show up at the top when someone searches on Google and the bottom. That's the only place we want to show up. So we're actually going to uncheck include Google search partners because a lot of websites out there use Google to power searches on their site. So as in this example, uh, Mac site, if someone types in bookkeeping services, then there will actually be ads that will show up on that site in addition to whatever the search results are. So we don't wanna show up on random searches uh, across the web, right? And a lot of news sites use this as well. So we wanna make sure we only show up on Google search. So we're going to uncheck search partners and then we're going to uncheck display network to again, just make sure we only show up on Google search. I'll leave a link in the cards in the description to a responsive display network campaign guide that goes through exactly how to set that up. It's really awesome after you have a search campaign up and running. So for our locations, we're going to go to enter another location and go to advanced search here. And if you do one thing with locations, it's not to use radius targeting and you'll see why in a moment. So for locations, if you're targeting a specific country, then you're going to want to go ahead and add locations in bulk and drop in all of the states, territories, or provinces. If you're targeting a specific state, then you're going to want to make a list of all of the zip codes, counties, or major cities that you want to target. So you do want to be detailed. Now, why do we want to go through this? Because later on, as you can see, when we enter all 50 states, we're going to be able to see a breakdown of our campaign data by state. If we don't do this, then we're just gonna have United States one line and all of our traffic, and we don't really know what worked. So coming back to search, I'm gonna go ahead and click on our search here, and I will go ahead and click target all, 
And of course, Washington State doesn't show up. It always does that to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click save for time purposes, but you can always zoom in on the map and make sure that you're targeting all of the individual locations you need and that there are not any overlaps. So it's good to do this because you're gonna be able to easily optimize in the future. Now there is one more step here. <laughs> so we need to come down here and click on presence. So people in or regularly in our targeted areas. Obviously, if you were a hotel or some sort, something related to travel, you want to get people who are interested in the location because you want outside people coming to the location. But here, we only want people physically in the states, territories, provinces, or zip codes that we are targeting. So we'll go ahead and come down to languages. We can go ahead and leave that alone for now. Then we'll go ahead and click on more settings. And this is two areas where it's completely up to you, but this is what I recommend. Number one, add rotation, come in here and click do not optimize. So what happens is if you leave it on optimize, let's say you get 600 impressions and you come back in two weeks, right? Then you find one ad got 500 impressions and 10 clicks and the other ad got just a hundred, but it got two clicks, right? So you don't really know which one worked because one ad got way more impressions or was shown multiple times more than the other. So you don't really know how to compare which one's better. So if we say do not optimize, then it's going to split. So we have 300 on one side, 300 on the other. And then all of a sudden we go, okay, well this one got 10 clicks and it was 300 impressions. This one only got two clicks and it was the same number of impressions. So we know which ad is better. And so that's why I like clicking do not optimize. If you're planning to just set this and kind of forget it, then go ahead and leave it on optimized. Now, the only other setting that we want to work with here is the ad schedule. If you want your ads to only run during your business hours, if you're going to be picking up the phone or that's really important to follow up with a contact or new lead really quickly. And then for our start and end dates, I like starting things on a Monday or Thursday. So I'll go ahead and start this a little bit in the future and then I'll let it run for two weeks. Now, the reason I like putting an end date is, you know, life happens. And I would much rather come back and go, oh no, I forgot to turn the campaign back on as opposed to, oh no, I've spent how much money on a campaign that's not working. And of course, Google will not give you your money back. So with that, we can go ahead and click on next here and we can start creating our keywords and our ad groups. So jumping into our campaign diagram here, at the very top, we've just created our campaign for all intensive purposes. We've set up our locations, our networks, and the important campaign settings that will apply to everything that we do in the rest of this guide. So the second level, which what we're about to do is going to be your ad group. So this is going to be where we use keywords. That's when someone types XYZ into Google, that's when we want our ad to show up. That's how we tell Google when our ads and who to show our ads to. And then the final level will be actually creating our ads, the things that people actually see, the words that people see to click on to go to your website and hopefully make a purchase or join your email list or, or give you a call as a new lead. Now, jumping back over to the Google Ads interface, we need to come up with some keywords. Now, they have a really cool tool here where you could enter your product or service. Let's say we were a Facebook ads agency and we could go ahead and click to get keyword suggestions. Although these are going to be very surface level and very broad. So it's probably not a good idea to spend your hard earned cash on these specific keywords. So you have two options. Number one, you can go ahead and use the keyword planner. So I'll leave a link in the cards in the description to a full guide that's just as long, if not longer than this one on how to do really in-depth keyword research to find those perfect low hanging fruit opportunity keywords. Or number two, you can just cheat and use this keyword formula. So these are the keyword formulas I like using for e-commerce or for lead generation. Uh, again, link in the description to our Google Ads playbook that actually has all of these and a couple more for you. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat and just use these formulas. And when you're just getting started, you only need three to seven ad groups. So these would be the three ad groups I would set up if I was a Facebook ads agency. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the suggestions for now and I'll go ahead and remove them because they just dropped them in there and I will go ahead and paste in the keywords that I want to use from this list. Again, link in the description to our Google Ads playbook that goes through exactly how to use whatever product or service you have with these formulas to quickly have some really great buyer intent keywords because that's what we want. We want keywords that represent people who are 
looking to buy, right? Because we need to sell our products and, and services. And so something that you'll notice here though, is we've put quotations and brackets, and we have two different versions with a quotation and bracket for each one of our keywords. So not to spend too much time on this, but we are essentially telling, telling Google, saying, hey, you know what? We really want people who are specifically looking for this. We don't want people who are just making any old search about Facebook ads. We really want people who are specifically looking for a management or agency. So here's a quick chart that goes through the differences between the match types. I pretty much never use broad anymore. It's just going to be phrase and exact. And again, the playbook linked in the description goes into more detail on that. So what you'll do is of course you create this ad group. And then once you're done with the campaign, because Google ads no longer lets us create another ad group here is you'll go ahead and create two more. And again, this is the example. I would create the bottom two ad groups after I create this one and set up the campaign. And then I'll go ahead and edit the ad group name. Totally forgot to do that. And then we are ready for our ads. So jumping back over to our diagram, we've completed the campaign settings, of course. We've set up our first ad group. We're going to need to make two more after you publish the campaign. And now it's time to create the ads. So for time purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and skip through all of the copying and pasting. And so we'll jump back in and then I can go through the differences in what you need to look for in setting up high converting ads. And of course, it's going to take you significantly longer in real life, but here is a preview of what our ads will look like. So the very first thing we need, of course, is going to be the final URL. So this is going to be where you're sending traffic to on your site. Then you have your display path one and two. And this is a great opportunity to add some urgency or call out specifically who the ad is for. And while Google Ads is pretty strict with what you can include in your headlines and descriptions, I find that sometimes I can put phrases like double your return on ad spend or something like guaranteed inside of the URL path, where as if I put it in the headlines, the ad would be disapproved. Obviously, I'm not saying to try and skirt around the ad policies. I'm just pointing out that sometimes you can be a little more salesy with the URL paths. So then we have our headlines. So they allow you to add up to 15 headlines. So as you can see here, honest, responsible management, see improvement in 14 days. And of course we can cycle through different examples. Sometimes it will show two headlines. Sometimes it will show three. So what it does is it looks at these headlines and then just rotates through them to try and find the best combination that gets you the most clicks or conversions. Are you ever going to know which combination is working the best? Well, no, not really. So you have two options. Number one, I recommend only adding five headlines so you don't have like 15 or 20 and then you really have no idea what's working. And then number two, if you have some headlines here, for example, see improvement in 14 days, I don't want that to ever show up in the front. So what you can do is you can click this little pin icon and tell Google Ads only show this in position three. So you can do that with, I'd say up to two, and then Google starts getting annoyed that you're trying to control too much. So five headlines, up to two of them pinned in a certain location, and you're good to go. You're going to want to make anywhere from at least two, please make at least two different headlines, up to three or five. So depending upon your budget, if you're doing something like $5 a day, Two ads is plenty because we want to make sure that our budget doesn't get spread so thin where you see each ad only got like 100 impressions or five clicks and you're like, well, I don't really know what's working. Well, we just had too many ads and it was spread out across two, two okay, I'm getting sidetracked here. Spread out across, uh, spread your budget too thin. Oh my, so then we have our descriptions. Now, really hardly anyone reads these descriptions, so just, write four of them and call it good. Don't even worry about creating multiple descriptions for all of your different ad groups. And of course, if you want more insight into how to actually write these, what you should include in your headline and your description, because your headline should be really focused on the benefits and getting people to click. Description just adds a little bit more in terms of features. I'll leave a link in the description to our Google Ads playbook that goes through the formula we like to use for writing Google Ads. So then we also have something called site links and callouts. And these are little bonuses that you can add to increase the potentially, I should say potentially, increase the size or real estate of your ad. So you can see in white here, we have Seattle Agency Honest Responsible Management. That's our headline. Then we have sit back and let us bring you three to five X ROAS. That's our description line. And then you see there's these little, very gray, super hard to read, Google Partner, our ROI driven, <laughs> 
con contract free account ownership. Yes, I, I think I can read. And these are called call outs. So these are little features. You can do social proof if you have any sort of certifications or something like shipping 24 seven or your, you have a generous refund policy, 90 day guarantee. Those are great to put in the call outs. They aren't always going to show up, but you might as well. There's really no penalty to. And then your site links here, you see free audit about us, ROI driven, ROI driven. Uh, obviously we need two, <laughs> we need two different ones there, but these allow you to segment the people who are showing up to your site. So unlike the link we set up at the top when we created our ad here, these are going to go to different pages on our site. So it's a great way to segment. Again, link in the description to the playbook that walks you through how to kind of put these together. So we'll go ahead and click on done here. So we've created our first ad. You're going to want to have at least two. If you're at $5 a day, two ads is plenty. Your, your budget is going to go really, really fast. So then we can go ahead and click on next. And with that, we've almost set up our campaign. You can see here, it's giving us an average daily budget recommendation of $45. That is a lot, although targeting PPC agency or Facebook ads management in Seattle, of course, is going to be pretty expensive to begin with. So hopefully it's not as crazy expensive for you. So we can go ahead and select a custom budget. So I'm just going to go ahead and set my budget to $5 a day. And of course, it's going to tell me that, hey, you should spend more money so you can show your ad more. So when you see warnings like this, don't freak out. It's just Google saying, hey, if you spend more money, you get more traffic, which is kind of self-explanatory. And of course, what they're not saying is then Google makes more money, right? So we can go ahead and set it to $5 a day and we'll go ahead and click on next to review our campaign. And of course it's telling us that it does not expect us to get any traffic whatsoever. So we might get a couple clicks and of course we might find that the keywords are just too expensive and we need to go do some other keyword research to find less expensive keywords. So I'll go ahead and scroll all the way down here and then I can click to publish the campaign. Now, if you're setting your ads account up for the very first time, you'll get to a page that looks something like this where you'll enter your billing information and then you can go ahead and set up your credit card and you'll be billed every couple hundred dollars that your campaign spent. So it's not necessarily going to be on a monthly basis. And so you can go ahead and click on submit and then you can explore your campaign and get into your campaign settings to start setting up your additional ad groups. Now, if you already have a account already set up, you're not going to go through this process. So jumping back to my account here, we'll go ahead and click on publish campaign. I'll ignore the missing information here. Of course, it wants me to fix those site links that were doubled up. And now you can see we have our campaign and we can go ahead and click this blue plus button to create another couple of ad groups. And again, with this example, I only created one ad group, so I'd create two more and then just run it for a couple of days or weeks to see how things play out. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you're a lot more confident when it comes to setting up your Google ads for leads and sales. Go ahead and comment below if you have any questions. I do still read and reply to every single one. I might be a little slow sometimes and check out that link in the description to our Google ads playbook that has our latest campaign settings and recommendations, especially when it comes to those keyword formulas and how to actually write your ads. So hit that like button, subscribe for more marketing guides, just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.